Today we will be taking a closer look at the portable ham radio station that I built over the last month or so. I gave a sneak preview of this rig in my previous video and have added some additional components since then. I will start with an overview of the functionality. This is an all-mode battery-powered rig with built-in SDR capabilities. It has fans for cooling, lights for use at night, support for switching between an internal and external VHF source, a built-in 100-watt linear amplifier for use on VHF, and more. Let's start by talking about how this rig is powered. This station contains two 16-amp-hour, 12-volt lithium-iron phosphate batteries for a total of nearly 400 watt-hours of energy storage. These batteries can be charged in two ways, constant current voltage and solar. Here you can see me using one of the popular eye chargers to charge the battery inside the rig. These chargers are normally used for remote control cars and quadcopters, but they work just as well for lithium iron phosphate 12 volt batteries. All of the 12 volt distribution is implemented at the bottom of the rack under the lowest shelf. These blank panels are easy to remove thanks to the simple rack mount design. This makes performing service and modifications easy. Power distribution is handled by two 8-way Anderson power pole distribution boxes. All 12 volt inputs and outputs are fused, including the batteries themselves. The 12 volt batteries are switched through a 40 amp Bosch 87A relay. This makes power management simple. When the power switches off, all devices inside the rig are powered down. There is a 10 amp MPPT charge controller mounted in the bottom of the rack as well. This maximum power point tracking controller ensures that the maximum amount of energy is transferred from the solar panel to the internal batteries and 12 volt devices. Along the bottom, there are two 12 volt sockets like what you would find in a car. This is a convenient place to attach a laptop charger. There are also USB ports that can be used to charge your phone and any other radio accessories that you might have. While this bottom compartment may seem like a large amount of space to dedicate to powering the rig, there is a lot of functionality provided by these two units of the six unit rack and is the backbone of the entire system. For this rig, I decided to use a Yaesu FT991 all mode transceiver. This is a powerful radio that supports HF, VHF, and UF with separate RF connectors. This was important to me so that I could use an HF and a VHF antenna at the same time. You might have noticed that this is the non-upgraded A model of the FT991. I found this particular radio on eBay for nearly half price. The band scope is important to me, but I actually wanted an external STR for that function. The fact that it was a little slow doesn't really bother me, so I decided that this would be a good fit and a good first radio for this particular rig. Atop the FT991, I have three RF switches. The first two allow bypassing the VHF amplifier to save power by using the internal VHF source. The third switch allows switching between the FT991 and an external handset that can be connected on the front panel. The first two switches are really connected in a double pull, double throw configuration, but I couldn't find a single switch that would switch four ports at the same time. If you know of anything, feel free to let me know. This is convenient because it allows me to connect my handheld, which supports APRS while still using the FT991 on HF. I can even route the HT through the linear amplifier, which is a pretty nice feature. All of this functionality comes at a price, and that price is weight. I haven't weighed the rig, but it has certainly exceeded what I would consider to be lightweight. This is a compromise, and I have a small trolley to make it easier to set up in a park. I bring a small table and chair with me when I operate mobile anyway, so it really isn't a big deal. I mentioned earlier that this rig has built-in SDR capability. This is a new Alec RTL-based SDR with a temperature-controlled oscillator and a low-noise amplifier. Here I am using Cubic SDR on Linux to tune across the 70cm band. This is connected to the antenna ports with an SDR transmit receive switch. This automatically detaches the SDR from the system while transmitting to ensure that we don't damage the receiver. This is a convenient way to see band activity and then quickly tune the radio to see what is going on and then maybe reply. The only missing component of this rig is the HF SDR. The second SDR transmit receive switch is currently on back order, but should be here in a few weeks. Here I am tuned into a trivia night on the Western Intertie system. This is a fascinating internet connected linked repeater network that touches vast parts of the US, Canada, and even far away places like Japan. Uh, KJ7 LOT, uh, acknowledging that we did get your email about being on the list. Um, yeah. So that's my project. I've been working on this for a few weeks and I had a really good time putting it together. I'm going to get some great fun out of this hobby. Uh, it's a good opportunity to make contacts with people all around the world 
in a time when it's very difficult to spend time with one another uh, due to the ongoing global pandemic. So this has been a nice way to, to pass the time. And um, I learned a bunch of stuff and I've got plenty more to learn. I've only got my technician license right now. And this is obviously an HF radio that can do a lot of really fancy things. So I'm looking forward to possibly upgrading to my general license. I'm hoping to take the tests online sometime and uh, that would be very interesting and start to explore the HF bands and try and make longer distance contacts. Anyway, that's my project. If you enjoyed it, I would really appreciate a like on the video. If you have any comments or ideas for things I could do better or ways to make this thing lighter, uh, please, comments are very welcome. Uh, if you want to see more videos from me, hit the subscribe button. I don't publish very often and this is not really like a dedicated ham radio channel or anything, but I've got all kinds of projects and maybe you'll enjoy some of my other videos. So with that, that's all I've got for now and I will see you next time.